Hey everybody, Jimmy Sal here. I uh, hope you all had a good holiday and you're having a good New Year so far. I'm a little under the weather, but uh, that just means you guys get this video a little earlier. So this is Revision C of Mega Grinder, and as you can see, it's changed yet again. Um, I did a lot of timing work and uh, just some, you know, maths and stuff and I've managed to shrink the grinder considerably. Uh, the first thing that you probably noticed was the corners are now uh, scalloped and uh, basically anything outside the current boundaries the items took longer than five minutes to get to the collection area so it didn't make sense to have anything there. Um, so I removed those and in support of that, I also trimmed the killing floors down and the primary and secondary transports as well. Now you can see that's the original wall there, so the grinder shrunk overall because I removed the center cross and then it got even smaller once I started knocking the corners off. So I've prepared a several visual aids and hopefully that'll explain how I arrived at this uh, design a little clearer than just having you guys take a look at it and you'll see that as we go down the ladder okay this was the footprint of Rev B it was four quadrants with a 30 block wide cross shaped dead zone in the center the first thing I did was timing studies for the cells that had the longest primary and longest secondary transports. And these were both over five minutes. So rather than trying to fight with making a transport system for the dead zone, I decided to just delete it. This left us with uh, solution one for Rev B. Uh, basically, it was symmetrical, and the next thing up was to do time studies for the same scenarios as I just did. Now these outermost cells, they were within five minutes, but I knew the corners were going to be a little rough. So I made this handy little spreadsheet here to tell me which cells I needed to knock off. And there's the overlay with the cells that I knew I needed to remove. And this ended up being the footprint for Rev C. Overall, Rev C is 47% the size that Rev B was. Here you can see a bit of a bird's eye view of how the downstairs changed. Overall, the, the grinder is pretty much the same. All the modules are more or less the same as they used to be they're just laid out in a different configuration. Since there's no dead zone, uh, this floor space right here is just basically so you have an easy way to get from one end to the other. As you can see. So, here's a look at the the primaries which are pretty much the same as they used to be, like I've been saying. Uh, they're just laid out differently. As you can see, this row has four working areas, I guess you could call them. And then as we continue on, you'll notice this one has eight working areas. Everything is the same as it was in the previous version. Like I've been saying, there's just a lot less of it. Okay, moving on. This row has 12 working areas. And they're the same design as all the previous ones. Uh, the only place that it changes is there, in the center. Uh, basically, since the drop shoots are now aligned on the center, 
you have 14 working areas that service uh, rows of three drop shoots each. And the other side is simply a mirror image of what I just showed you. Um, ah, I changed the last bit of the secondary as well, because I needed to pick up a few seconds to make some of the cells get their loot to the collection area in time. So I backspaced these source blocks, and I put a little retaining wall here so that mobs don't drop on my head if the lighting is poor. And instead of sort of wiggling around, the drops go right down onto your head in the collection area. So you just stand in this little depression and pick them up the same way as before. Just like with the previous versions, it takes a little while for the grinder to get ramped up to operating speed. Uh, but once it does, the drops come in even faster than they did in Rev B. I think I can hear some coming in now. There we go. Uh, so like I said, I changed the layout down here a little bit don't need those last little canals since the things are coming right down on your head now and uh, to finish up let's take a look at some benchmarks uh, this was solution one where I just got rid of the cross in the center and this is the finalized Rev C um, now if we go ahead and compare these to Rev B whoops now Rev B clocked in at 3,967 items per hour. Getting rid of the cross got me 5,243 per hour, and the final for Rev C was 5,448 items per hour. So that's a pretty good jump, and I'm not sure if all of that is due to uh, getting rid of the cross in the center. It, it certainly seems that most of it is, but I'm not sure what future effects uh, pruning more cells would have versus adding more floors, and that's something that I'm going to investigate in the future. Um, and speaking of the performance of RevB, I'm going to be posting a download link for the save file for RevB, so you guys can uh, enjoy that. And once RevD is ready, you guys will be able to sink your teeth into Rev C, what you've seen in the video here today. Um, I think that'll just about do it. A uh, couple fun little statistics before we go. Uh, this version, I got a full stack of sulfur in 2 minutes and 20 seconds. A uh, full stack of arrows in 2 minutes and 38 seconds full stack of feathers in 2 minutes and 49 seconds and a full stack of string in 3 minutes and 3 seconds. My inventory was basically full in 23 minutes and 56 seconds and I still think I can improve on that by uh, changing the spawning floors. So thanks for watching and if you have any ideas let me know.